Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another exciting episode of Mirel Looks At. This week we're looking at Niche, a genetic survival strategy game. Uh, it's... I, I honestly can't adequately explain what this game is. It's kind of this top-down, bird's-eye board game. Uh, you start off with these two cute little cat things, and you have to evolve. They call it your tribe, your family. You need to expand, fill an evolutionary niche on a randomly generated map. It's really interesting. And the coolest thing I think is it's actually based on real genetics. So let's get going here. This was created by the uh, Team Niche from the Zurich University of Art. Uh, still in a demo version currently, 0 0.2.1, provided to me by Team Niche. Thank you very much. And I just, I can't get over this game. It is just really exciting. The graphics are great. Uh, a few minor bugs, but as it stands right now, it is a terrific little game. So, we'll take a quick look at some of the stuff before we start. So, as you can see, we're sitting, it looks like we're on the edge of two different biomes. We have savanna down here. We have some, I think it's grassland or swampland up here. We'll explore that a bit more. Up here is the temperature each of your little things. Uh, I don't even know what to call them. I'm going to call them niches. Each of your little niche cats uh, has a specific temperature that they're adapted to. Uh, obviously those geared towards the savanna uh, are going to have different temperature needs, comfort zones, than those that live in, say, I don't know, tundra. Uh, both of which are biomes we will probably come across here. Down here in the bottom left, you have your berries or your food stash. Each action your little things, your little niche cats do, uh, will consume one berry, except for collecting berries, which is great. Down here we have some stats, so I believe it's uh, this little fella I have here. Oh, no, I take it back. It was this one. Uh, she can move five little hexes in one go. She collects two berries at a time. So we'll collect two berries. Versus this fella here only collects one. Her attack is only one. She can see three hexes. And she can smell. So that's actually going to be very useful in the future. But before we go too far, we need to make little babies. There we go. Now, I personally like to stock up on some food. Oh, all the berries are pretty much collected at this point. But before we go further, let's take a look at some other things. So we have days survived down here. One out of 200. I'm going to be completely honest, the furthest I've made is 75 so far, so I'm not 100% sure what happens when you hit 200. Uh, down here we have her name, and you can see her gender there, and she's carrying an egg. Over here we have the different genetic traits. She has a big nose, plus two to smelling. She has normal eyesight, plus three She's a normal-sized niche cat, and then she has her normal paws, and as well, some immunity traits here. Now, this is really interesting, and this is something we're going to have to keep track of, because, believe it or not, inbreeding will actually affect your group. Like I said, it's based on real genetics. It'll hurt their immunity. They may get sick more easily. You know, essentially what happens when they're inbred. Up here we have their lifespan. Each of these little dots represents one day. If we run out of, say, for example, food and you keep making them do actions, they will lose one day off of their total lifespan. If they get attacked, something very similar. Now, the game itself is broken up into, I guess it's turn-based more or less, so let's start our next turn. We go on to day number two. So. We should probably explore a little bit, and I'm going to use this guy to explore. And I'm going to explore a bit with her as well. Now, we are looking at gene unlocking. We have enough gene points, I believe, to unlock one of these. Now, contrary to what I, be 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 contrary to what I believed initially, this doesn't just add that to your gene pool. What's going to happen here is now we are going to be more likely to come across creatures, niche cats, with that uh, ability, or it may randomly mutate. 
Now if we zoom in here, you can see these, they're kind of like little gems. Those are how many actions they can do per day. See this little guy, he's a baby. Is it? Yeah, it is a little guy. So he can only move one per day. As they get older, they unlock more. But as it stands right now, we need to do a bit more exploring. So we're going to go up here and get bitty with it. And she did not get bitty with it. Okay, there we go. And back to the nest. Now, you have to be really careful, because if they all die out, you're up the creek. Uh, once they're all dead, you need to start over. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if they do all pass away, you can restart in the world. But, I believe, and again, I may be mistaken on this, your genes that you've unlocked do carry over, so it may make... Oh, sugar snaps. So, that's a bad guy. Uh, let's try and protect these babies a little bit. So, this is a carnivore. They live out in the world, and they love eating niche cats. So, we're going to play a bit of a defensive game, and hope he comes a little bit closer. He's not going to, so we are going to have to make the first attack. Oh, and we are hurting for food. This is really not a great way to start. Oh, and she's preggers. Okay. So he's down to nine life points. With any luck, he'll run away. No, he's just going to attack Adam, and that hurt. Oh, sugar. And we're out of food. I need to keep a better eye on that. Now, the good news is, if we do kill this guy, there we go, we do get food from that. So that was not a total loss. Uh, Adam, as you can see here, he's lost six days off his lifespan. He's only going to be around for another four or five, which is sad, but we will try to make up for that. Now, your little niche cats can only give birth in these little nests. So that's what we're going to want to do. Uh, keep her close to nests until we can find some more. And look at that, there's another one. So we'll get you collecting a berry, and you're out. But we're up to seven food, so we're making some progress. Now, you can hear in the grass, there's something rustling. It could be a friendly little thing, or it could be... A, a giant scary monster. We'll have to wait and find out, but we need more berries. Now, if you do have, uh, I believe it's the big snout smelling ability here that this little one has, which is exciting. That's a very useful trait because it will tell you whether or not there is any, or I guess it will give you a hint whether it's a carnivore or not. And those are what we're avoiding thing to remember is, though, carnivores do move on their own. So while it may be up there in the grass today, it could quite happily move. Now, he has no turns left, so there's nothing else we can really do there. Oh, and we're down to a berry. What I would give to find... Oh, there we go. So another thing we can talk about here now is different things will happen in the area. Droughts will prevent berries from regrowing, uh, where downpours like this will cause the berries to grow fresh, which is something we desperately needed. Now, we're only up to five. Oh, I hope this isn't a carnivore. Oh, good. <laughs> I was really worried. So here we have a new little niche cat. As you can see, they're very different looking. Oh, this is, I think, my only complaint. The camera angles sometimes are finicky. But you know what? If that's all I have to complain about, I think we're doing pretty good. So here we have New Curve. All these names are randomly generated, so some of them are a little difficult to say. And then we have Nuduck. Nuduck is a male. He has antlers, so he has plus two strength. His eyesight is normal. Uh, body is toxic, so if he gets killed by a carnivore, the carnivore will die. That is really useful. And he has two different immunity genes here. 
so we're safe to breed him with the rest. And I'm going to move him over here. I think our little lady's up there. We'll get bitty with it. And she can go down there into the new little nest we just discovered. I was trying to think of what the word was. So here we go. We're on day 13. I know not a lot has happened, but sometimes you gotta play it a little carefully. And we'll take another look up there. I'm not 100% sure what that is. Hmm. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at some of the different genes that are available to us before I get too far ahead of myself. So we have claws, plus one strength, plus one speed, big ears, better hearing, and it lowers body temperature, so good for Savannah. Uh, lean speed or lean body gives you plus two speed, and it lowers your body temperature again. Uh, then we have berry paws, gathering, and speed, as well as digging paws. You can dig up food. That one is useful to an extent, but it's not as great as finding a proper... Uh, supply of food. Now, we can see down here, Adam has passed away. That's sad. Those will stay around for a few turns. I don't know exactly how many, but it will stick around. And that was, he reached the end of his life. If we go down here, Eve is, she didn't get attacked by the carnivore, so she still has another five days or so, which is great because we don't have any women uh, besides her. So, unless that baby comes out a girl, we may be in a bad spot. Um, hmm. Do we see any grass moving? Let's explore down here a bit, I suppose. Nothing useful there. Ah, uh, now we're out of food. Now, I personally don't like making them do actions when there's no food, if I can avoid it. Uh, it just... I've burned myself too many times by accidentally killing everybody. That's the long and the short of it. Okay, so we know there's something there. That's great. And our berries have regrown, so we actually have enough food to go exploring quite a bit. Uh, hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to, or we don't have enough turns. Actually, we still had enough food. Uh, I'm going to assume that since he wasn't attacked, oh, wonderful. So not only did we find a new niche cat, and it's a woman, we have, or I should say, female. Uh, be politically correct here. We also have enough genes to unlock a new thing. So let's... Mm. Oh, this is difficult. Do we want them to be strong or do we... No, you know what? We're going to go with gathering for now. Now, she has uh, at antlers as well, if we look down here. Or sorry, she has a, a ram, uh, which I believe is technically a kind of antler in terms of this game. But you see over here our purple one, he actually has antler antlers. So this game actually does ha contain some uh, dominant and recessive genes, and that has been confirmed by the devs. So that is something that I personally think is really neat. Now one thing... I would like to do is let's get some new genes up in here. Oh, and look, we have a little... Oops! Lost track of our food situation. Okay. Our little baby over here actually does have antlers. So that's something that luckily did carry on. That's going to give them, I believe it's a bonus to attack. Oh, I should probably click on him. 
And he does three damage. That's actually pretty crazy. Am I looking at the right one? Oh no, sorry. We can't click those after they've done. So we have... She has one. Oh no, that is him. So he does have three. That's wonderful. That's a strong little thing. Oh, it's a she too. Great. So we can do a bit more breeding there. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is also toxic. No, she's just a weird color. That's disappointing. But we'll explore down here some more. Um, berry bushes would be terrific to find. Or quite possibly um, a molehill or something. That would be fun too. Just because moles are, again, a slightly... a slightly less reliable food source than the berries. Uh, it doesn't rely on droughts, or I guess rainfall necessarily, um, but you do need two attacks. So you can be put in a position where you have food, but you can't actually get it. Um, and another thing that I didn't realize until too late is some of your little niche cats will be born without attack. So be careful when you're sending your little buddies off to fight that big meme carnivore uh, because you never know what could happen. Now if we look down here we're gonna move Mina up here Oh, and we're gonna learn to start doing our food gathering on the first go. Oh now I'm stuck between a rock and a hard spot. So here we have, this is Loreco. She can move three gathers one, one attack, she can see all right, she can smell, but she has rams. She has a ram snout. So, once she is fully mature, we can start trying to get that into our population a little bit more. Now, just to ensure that our, oh gosh, that our little guys don't get too accidentally inbred, we are going to try and water down the next generation's genes a little bit more. Now that being said, we are down to two food, so I will move him and we'll take a look. And we didn't find anything. So we're on to a new day. Now if we look over here, um, someone was sick and that was our little purple buddy, who unfortunately has passed away. I didn't get to that in time. We're actually down to a few that are getting close to the end of their lifespan, unfortunately. So, first things first. Food. I'm not messing that up again. We'll move her out. I don't know if them sitting in the nest affects growth or not. Uh, however, it does seem to me as if it does, so I always try to move them out after the baby's been born. Um, if this really was not a great spot for us all in all, we haven't really found too much that's super useful. Uh, we have some berry plants, we have two nests, but other than that, we don't have a lot going for us. Now, we are kind of reaching uh, the 20 minute mark, and I really didn't want this to go on too, too long. Um, so, uh, there's some things I wanted to show you, though, that I haven't come across, so I don't know. This could become a Let's Play. Um, I would honestly really like to hear from you guys whether or not you would like to keep going with this, see what happens to little baby new crib. Oh no, Loreco new crib is that fella there. So, there we go. We're going to take a quick look. We started off with something that essentially looked like that. You know, nothing super interesting. Pretty plain. We came across her. Then we have, in the end, this little guy down here has antlers. And down even further, oh, if I can get down that way. Then we have a purple, purple little toxic one with ram horns. So it's very interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, as far as my recommendations go, check it out. One of the earlier builds is available on IMDb, link down in the description. 
Um, though I'm sure if you reached out to the devs really, really nicely, they may they may email you a newer build. Um, graphics are great. This is all done in Unity. It runs really well. Uh, the only little hiccup I've ever had with this is when I went to go start recording today. Fraps made it load a little longer. So, honestly, it's really well programmed. Art is great. Uh, huge potential. What they have in here now is solid, and from what I understand, the devs are looking at putting more into it. More animal types, if I'm not mistaken, as well as different genes that can become unlocked. They are looking to hit up green light later in the year, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can see them. It's wet, or their website, I should see, say, is niche-game.com, and you can also check them out on Twitter at niche game. Um, so all in all, I wholly recommend it. This is a great little game, great little time waster, and once you start learning what you're doing, you can actually accomplish quite a bit. I know we only got like 22 days in, so we're only, what, 10% done the game? You know, we could keep going for hours and hours and hours. But that being said, I do want to thank you guys. Keep an eye out because we are loading the second part of the series premiere of Darkest Dungeon today. I apologize, that was supposed to go up last week, but some technical difficulties turned this into a double upload week. Don't forget to check us out at the Red Hot Gamers website, www.redhotgamers.co.uk, and hit me up on Twitter at GamingWithMurel. If you like this stuff, remember to subscribe, folks. It means the world to me, and it keeps me going. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.